So Anthony, we're delighted, of course, to have you here with us, uh, particularly someone with such a long experience of Wagner as yourself. Wagner, yeah, so I was a cheeky chap. Um, I somehow went through the stage door one day and the chap shouted, Arr! and I just went on and on, and I, some instinct led me into the pit. Uh, <laughs> and I arrived there and I thought, if I stay in the pit this evening, um, I'll be all right. I just knew that instinctively. And it happened to be a Tristan performance conducted by Carl Böhm. Uh. And incidentally, the first Tristan I ever saw was that year with Marta Myrdal uh. as Isolde, magical in the Liebestod uh, in a golden light. You know, Wilhelm Wagner changed the lighting each year. That was 1962. So, but anyway, I was in the pit, uh, but it was still a bit risky until I met Rudolf Kempe. Mm. who was conducting the ring uh, and then he gave me the open sesame and I used to bang on the big door in the foyer and the orchestra manager Herr Gultsov would let me in. Wonderful, wonderful. So you're sitting there watching Kemper conduct the ring? Kemper of the ring, well. Knappertsbusch Parsifal, ah. Thomas Schippers, Meister Singer and several Berm uh, yeah. performances at Tristan. This is great. And then of course you had a long association with Reginald Goodall. That was really the next Tristan phase in my life because Welsh National Opera, where I was a member of the music staff, put on um, Tristan and Isolde. I always remember, I had already met Reginald Goodall 10 years earlier when he was preparing the ring, mm. and I'd been a voluntary assistant. But it was during the Electra dress rehearsal that I saw a pair of gold-rimmed glasses glinting in the auditorium. I thought, I recognise them. I went round to see, and it was Reginald Goodall, and I, it was a plot. I didn't know what was happening and they were going to do Trista. And, and then they sent me up to London and I spent weeks and weeks playing for him right. with the rehearsals. And so when did you finally get to grip the baton for Trista? Well, that was the next Tristan at Welsh National, a new production by Yanis Kokos, very beautiful mm -hmm. looking one with Anne Evans doing her first Isolde, Geoffrey Lawton as Tristan. And, um, Sir Charles McCarris, ah. who was then music director of the Welsh National Opera. Right. And I was working with him on all the uh, Mozart and the Richard Strauss and Wagner. Mm. And I was not due to conduct a performance, but they, they wouldn't, no, no, they wanted Sir Charles to do them all. However, he hatched a plot with me. I'm going to go ill that night, he said. And it was very embarrassing for me because it made life a bit tense with the company because it, it was an open secret. Oh, I see. You know. But then, generous of him, though. Yeah, well, it was, in a way. And so I went in and did this performance in Southampton. Right. Uh, to which my mother travelled from Buckingham to see. As and it, it was an <laughs> evening I shall always remember. I, I imagine so. And that was with the Welsh National? With the Welsh National. And then, of course, now you have your own festival at Longborough. Yeah. Where you're doing, working your way through the canon. Yeah, we started with a small version of the ring uh, and then we started the proper ring in 2007, uh, building it up and did the full cycles. I mean, when I think about it, four cycles in a row, one dress rehearsals, then two days off, <coughs> another cycle, two days off, another one. So <laughs> that was also the bicentenary year of Wagner's um, birth, ah, okay. you know, 1813, 2013. And we were rather proud to be the only company in Britain to do a staged ring that year. Yeah. 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 It's an amazing work to start, isn't it? The, do, it? Will you ever get to the bottom of it? Never, 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 never. Uh, uh, what I love peeling off the things, you know, I mean, I was given a vocal score uh, when I was 16 and I started playing it and I had recordings, Schultes recording, Fort Wengler's recording. Um, and so it's just been a period playing and playing, working with singers and so on. And then of course I became much more orchestrally conscious and yeah. and each time I do it it's so exciting. Oh, of course, you know, how the bits fit. Yeah. And yes, I wrote an essay about it. I discovered um, uh, Lorenz, Alfred Lorenz, mm -hmm. who wrote these volumes about the mystery of form in Wagner. Mm -hmm. And though he takes his... impenetrable German, no doubt. He, fairly <laughs> impenetrable. I said at the time when I read this, it was a revelation to me, I said, I'm going to translate it. I'm afraid I haven't got round to doing it. Yet. Well, in your yeah. 
breaks here. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yes, between performances, yeah. So, I mean, it's a fascinating work, isn't it? And there's so many different approaches to it. What, what would you describe as your basic approach to Tristan? More dramatic, more lyric, fast, slow? You know, we, oh, we go from Furtwängler and Kapitz yes. to well, Bernstein. Well, poetry and magic, I feel, and above all that sense of um, special, you have to find the moments that really matter. So the moment when Isolde describes the blick, the, the glance, the love which took place between her and Tristan with the viola solo, which our solo viola played so beautifully at the first rehearsal that I was almost in tears. Uh, and the orchestra gave her a round of applause. And so. Rightly so, may I say. Yeah. <laughs> it's a terrifying solo. It's, but, you know, but, it's, as you say, a full that, the, so often the viola has the, the real soul of the piece. I feel that the violas, cellos, of course, mm. uh, and the, the oboe, yes. right at the heart of Tristan, and the cor anglais is the very sad side of it all. Mm. Very important. So, yes, I mean, Karl Böhm was thrilling, but I felt that he was almost too white hot for some of the more dolce moments. Uh, and that's what I discovered with Goodall. I mean, I just couldn't believe the flexibility of movement that you could find. And he pointed that Wagner puts that himself. Very animated and changeable, he writes, over his narration, which means you don't plough through it like that. You know, it constantly changes. So over the years now, you've been conducting it obviously for many years. How have you... How's it developed for you personally? Oh, it's just become more, uh, I think it's become more secure. You know, I, know, I think I'm clearer about the pacing and uh, I'm hoping to find more space in it than I did at Longborough, right. partly because it'll be a bigger orchestra here yes. and the acoustic is going to be it's very resonant. Theater, beautiful, well, beautiful acoustic. Right. I, mean, I haven't yet been there, but you know, you've told me about it. No, I uh, and also, I mean, when you told me we're having uh, 14 or six, 16 or 14? 16, 16 first violins, which is what Wagner asked for. Yeah. At Longbrow, I can only fit 10 in the pit. Right. And the acoustic okay. is drier there. Yeah. So that inevitably means one's uh, tempo is going to be faster. Mm -hmm. But so I hope to find space as well as the energy, you know. So after Tristan here, which we're very, very delighted about, as I keep telling you, but we truly are in the orchestra just having this time, as are the singers, most of whom are doing it for their first time, our cast, but we're very fortunate that you secured Neil Cooper for us to sing the role of Tristan, who yeah. has worked with you. Yes, he did a performance in 2015, right. which was the first year we did uh, Carmen Jacobi's production, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Peter Wedd was the principal Tristan, but Neil was understudying and did a performance. Mm, he's certainly a fine singer. And then he went on to do it in yes. Germany yeah, yeah. and to cover it at the Met and so on. So he's so secure in it now. And his voice has reached its held and tenor, so to speak, yes, state, you know, and he can be more flexible than he used to be. Yeah, and, and it so doesn't help doesn't do any harm that he's six foot two and uh, oh, rather well built. <laughs> and the, the nephew of a famous uh, boxer. Famous boxer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is great. Uh, and so after this, what's next on your schedule? Um, well, we are preparing for another ring at Longbra, uh -huh. which will start in 2019 with Ryan Galt and hopefully be, do the cycles in 2023. Mm -hmm. But this coming season at Longbra, I'm going to work back into the earlier Wagner. We're doing the Fliegen der Holländer, ah, right. which I'm very excited. I had a chance to do two performances in Lübeck in, uh, in the autumn, which is very helpful. So I've got it under my belt, so to speak, right. once or yeah. twice. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also doing Strauss's Ariadne of Naxos. I think with a, a, a singer very, very well known to Melbourne Opera. And Melbourne uh, a lovely, wonderful soprano called Helena Dix. Yes, I know she's uh, looking forward to that. Game. I am enormously... She walked into the room auditioning it and there was no question that she should be the one. Now, an amazingly versatile singer. She did, uh, she did Lohengrin with us, went back to the Met and then came back in an emergency and... and uh, was a yeah. sensational Elizabeth in Robert She's Robert a Robert. delight to be with Isn't and she? she's a great colleague. A bit of a rarity, although your wife is a well-known director and did the Tristan for you at mm. Longborough, is that we have, of course, a rather fine uh, production team here on our Wagner operas, including, of course, our great director, Suzanne Chaundy, 
Yeah. And uh, how's that going? Oh, <laughs> loving it, loving it. I knew we were going to get on straight away. She sent me uh, an advance email with the, uh, the design and her ideas about it. And I, I just wrote back and said, I could not agree with you more. Okay. You know, and there was just one question I had about the setting of one thing. But no, we're having a great time working together. I think we understand each other well. And uh, I'm really, really thrilled with the cast and our lovely Lee Abramson, who I think is v going to be very special. Yes. You know, well, she's very fortunate to be your first dissolver in your safe hands. Too. Well, I, I think uh, she's going to develop into a very special artist. And what I particularly love about her is the fact that she's a leader singer yes. and a very, very fine musician. You know, so that means one can really shape things sensitively. And the orchestra, as I said to them at the first rehearsal, we've got to be able to come back where we need to, really play really quietly. Mm. Just listen, 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 listen. It's all about that. That was the secret of Reginald Goodall. He got people to listen because, I mean, it's well known that he didn't beat four in a bar. You know, he, he just sort of did things. Uh, uh, but he did it because he had sectional rehearsals and people started to play it for themselves like chamber music. Right, right. Yeah. well, he used to have rather lengthy preparation time. He, oh, <laughs> yeah. he asked for two or three years and he got at least a year and a half. <laughs> the Carlos Kleiber approach. Well, yes, I think, <laughs> funnily enough, the two of them met oh. at the stage door of Cup Garden uh, in the early 80s. And it was very moving as a photograph of them because I think they both regarded each other very highly. Ah, that's and, uh, and they both recorded Tristan. I assisted yeah, cool. him on the, his Tristan recording uh, the same year as Carlos recorded it in um, Dresden with, with Margaret Price. Price. Yeah. Yeah. And what a great recording both of them are. Yes, I think... And I, may I just say, I gather there's one in the works with your good self. Well, this plot, um, James Mallinson, who did a lot for Sir Charles, mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful thing, he came up with the idea of recording it for Longborough. Mm -hmm. It hasn't yet come to anything, and then we threw out the idea, you know, of coming here. Um, but, uh, so maybe it'll happen sometime. I reckon it should. <laughs> As you had also a very long association with Sir Charles McCarris, I believe, uh, Anthony, that I think he may well have approved of Melbourne Opera's recent repertoire, ranging as it has from HMS Pinafore yeah. to Lohengrin to Roberto Devere and then to Tristan. Yes, and I said, and um, all he needed to do was De Frau and yeah, that'll, <laughs> <laughs> We'll save that for another day. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, thank you, Greg.